Hello, my name is Simon Thompson. I am the Director of Research at Tier 4, an autonomous driving software company based in Japan. A quick thank you to Apex AI for organizing this lecture series and for the invitation to present on the topic of HD Maps. The lecture today will be on HD Maps for autonomous driving. For convenience, the lecture is broken into two parts. The first, HD Maps for Autonomous Driving, is a general introduction into HD Maps, while the second part, HD Map Usage in AutoWare, looks specifically how HD Maps are used in the AutoWare software stack. This, the first part of the lecture, will describe the concepts behind HD Maps and their use for autonomous driving technology, describe some of the common HD Map formats that are available to the open source software community, and briefly describe how such HD Maps can be created. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the lecture. To start, I would like to give a brief introduction about Tier 4 and its involvement in AutoWare and the AutoWare Foundation. Tier 4 was founded by Professor Shinpei Kato in 2015. Shinpei is the original creator of AutoWare and he founded Tier 4 around the concept of open source software for the autonomous driving domain. The company's vision is the democratization of autonomous driving to enable equal access to the benefits of this revolutionary technology. Tier 4 was the driving force behind AutoWare.ai up until the end of 2018 when Professor Kato founded the AutoWare Foundation and donated the ownership of the AutoWare project to the foundation. Tier 4 continues to be a key developer behind AutoWare with 160 plus employees, development centers in Tokyo and Nagoya, and funding and collaborating in research in the autonomous driving technology. As such, we are pleased to be involved with this lecture series, both as an educational resource for potential autonomous driving engineers and as a vehicle for promotion of the AutoWare open source software project. Here is an outline of the contents of part one of the lecture. First, I will describe exactly what HD maps are in relation to autonomous driving technology, what they are used for, what types of information they contain, and give some examples of well-known commercial HD map providers. Second, I will introduce some industry standard HD map formats. Because this lecture is targeted to open source autonomous vehicle development, I will focus on open formats, such as OpenDrive and LaneLets2, but will also briefly introduce the NDS format, which is widely used in the automotive industry. Finally, for part one of this lecture, I will describe how these types of HD maps can be created with a focus on methods available to the open source community. The first topic in today's lecture is what are HD maps? HD Maps is a very broad topic, and there are many and varied conceptualizations and implementations of HD Maps. Today I will attempt to provide a broad overview of the general concepts behind HD Maps and what types of information they contain. There are many types of geographic maps in use in the world today roads, survey, climate, terrain maps, and even satellite images. These have varying levels of resolution and inclusion of detail, many of which could be said to be high definition. But these can be more or less useful for the task of autonomous driving. It is not simply the characteristic of being high definition which defines an HD map. At the same time, in the last quarter of a century, digital navigation maps have become ubiquitous, whether they are on mobile phones, computers, or car navigation systems. These maps, while including navigation information, leave the interpretation and execution of the navigation task, particular, particularly the perception task, to human users. However, it is precisely the interpretation of such information and the perception of the environment that are the biggest challenges in current autonomous vehicle systems and AI in general. High definition maps, then, are maps designed to overcome these limitations and provide information about the environment and the navigation tasks to simplify the tasks to be performed by the autonomous vehicle. By representing the world at high definition, the perceptual tasks can be simplified and even replaced by pre-computed maps. Interpretation of maps can also be simplified by attaching the semantic meaning to mapped objects. As a general definition, high High definition maps can be said to be centimeter level accurate maps of the environment specifically designed to aid in the oper operation of autonomous vehicles from assisted driving right through to fully autonomous, autonomous vehicles. As such, 
They are sometimes called HAD maps or highly autonomous driving maps. So, what are HD maps used for? They are used in every step of the autonomous driving process sensing, perception, localization, decision making, planning, and control. Any task that relies on spatially embedded information that describes the environment, whether the information is ge geometric, semantic, or temporal in nature. HD maps can be used as a virtual sensor or as an aid in the perception of the environment. It can fully replace sensor based perceptions or extend the range of physical sensors by sensing beyond the current field of view. Or it can be used to direct the attention of sensing and perception systems to important regions such as intersecting roads, pedestrian crossings, etc. Localization is also an important task made simpler by HD maps. By matching current sensor data against what we expect to see as defined by an HD map, we can localize where the vehicle is in relation to that map. The final use I will mention today is the application to motion planning and the prediction of the motion of other road users. HD maps can be used to plan eagle motion by considering the road lane network and also to predict the behavior of other road users with the expectation that they will also follow the defined road network and obey general traffic rules. The next topic is what information do HD maps contain? Here is a sample T intersection to illustrate the types of information that HD maps typically represent. Conceptually, HD maps are typically defined by layers related to the level of abstraction of the information, whether the information is static or dynamic, and the particular task the layer is targeted towards. In practice, map information can be conceptualized into five layers, geometric, semantic, road lane network, experiential, and a real-time layer. The geometric layer contains the physical position of objects, both virtual and real, in the environment described by primitives such as points, line strings, polygons, areas, etc. They can model such things as the physical position of lane boundaries, as shown in the T-intersection example, or they can be dense point cloud maps representing the structure of the environment, as shown in the bottom image. The semantic layer attaches semantic labels to the geometric primitives to give them meaning. Additional data can also be associated to these semantic objects to further provide information about how they should be treated by an autonomous vehicle. Here, by attaching the label lanelet to the polygons describing lane boundaries and attaching additional data tags such as direction of travel and speed limits, the autonomous vehicle is relieved of the necessity to accurately detect road lanes and speed limit signs. Additionally, locations of traffic signs, signal lights, and stop lines, and their semantic labels can further inform the behavior of an autonomous vehicle. The road or lane network layer describes the connectivity between lane or road type primitives that in totality describe the road network. This network can then be used by an autonomous vehicle to plan routes to distant locations while respecting the connectivity of its parts as well as the road rules they contain. Examples of types of cogn connectivity between lane prim primitives are relations such as succeeding, preceding, adjacent and conflicting lanes. These examples are shown in the figure relative to the yellow lane containing the vehicle icon. The experiential layer is used to represent information from experience, either direct from a specific vehicle or the aggregated past experience of a fleet of vehicles. It can represent things like expected traffic flow in a particular lane or the historic incidents of accidents in a given intersection. Autonomous vehicles can then plan routes to account for such information and potentially improve efficiency in travel time and fuel consumption. This layer is also known as a map prior layer and can be updated incrementally according to vehicle experience or by periodic update from a fleet management system. The final layer is the real-time layer in which dynamic changes in the map can be represented and can be shared between road users. Information can be things like locations of traffic jams, accidents, or new areas of road maintenance. 
Ideally, such information would come from surrounding vehicles, road infrastructure, fleet management systems, and regulating authorities. As well as allowing for more efficient route planning, this layer can allow for changes in lane geometry, for instance to allow the easy motion around a stalled vehicle partially blocking a lane. To summarize this section, here I would like to introduce some examples of well-known HD maps. To describe each in detail is outside of the scope of this lecture, and I would just like to identify a few interesting features from each. All of these examples are from commercial map providers or rideshare companies, where the exact map definition is proprietary information, so not a lot of details are available. The first example is from Lyft Level 5, who have defined a five-layered HD map and described the four principles behind their design as being mapping as pre-computation, mapping as a safety feature, maps as a unique sensor, and maps as a shared space. Their approach nicely reflects the map layer conceptualization introduced above. The linked medium article by a Lyft engineer is worth reading if you are further interested in these topics. The second example is from TomTom, a map provision company who have proposed the notion of road DNA. In this concept, all road information for localization is represented in a sensor agnostic fashion so that their maps do not limit the localization tasks to any particular sensor. The third example is from here, and is their HD Live Map offering, where they have implemented self-healing map technology and continuously evaluate the map quality through a defined quality index. From these brief examples, you can see they contain a lot of the concepts and layering described earlier, but that they are pushing the existing concepts to make systems more robust or to expand the incorporation of real-time information and map maintenance capability. The next topic is industry standards for HD maps. Here I will introduce some formats for, for representing HD maps with a particular focus on open map definitions that can be used for open source projects. As I mentioned, the examples of HD maps given in the previous section are from commercial products and as such their formats and software APIs are proprietary. The type of industry standardization of HD map formats required for interoperability between autonomous vehicle platforms is still in its infancy. Here I will focus on open map standards that have either evolved out of established industries such as vehicle navigation systems and driving simulators or have been proposed by academic researchers in open source projects. The industry standards I will cover are the Navigation Data Standard, the OpenDrive XML format, and the Lanelet2 OSM format. As well as open map formats, it is very useful for the autonomous vehicle developer if HD maps are supplied with software APIs to aid in using the map format. The first format I will share is not an open format as such, but it is important to know about it as it is the de facto standard among automotive OEMs, map data providers and navigation device application developers. It grew out of the need for standardization within the car navigation systems and involved companies formed an association to manage the standard. As you can see from the diagram, it is heavily influenced by the map visualization requirements of car navigation devices and is optimized for search and routing over state-sized maps. A subset of its building blocks has been applied to the new application of autonomous driving. The format and associated tooling is only available to association members who are required to pay membership and yearly fees. The association offers an open reduced set standard called Open Lane Model to encourage research into autonomous driving. This slide shows some of the features of the NDS. I won't go into detail about it. However, it is a well-established standard providing all of the features required for autonomous driving and used widely in the automotive and map provision industries. The mem membership fees and restriction on the distribution of the definition, however, mean that it is not appropriate for open source projects except with the reduced version of the definition. The NDS Association are also currently in a project with HERE to implement 
a live NDS format HD map solution. The next example of an HD map industry standard is Open Drive, a map de definition format that grew out of the driving simulator company Virus. They initially defined the format out of a need to share driving simulator environments between simulator platforms. The definition itself is open, but there are very few open source tooling associated with it. A very limited open API is available on the virus site. OpenDrive is now managed by ASAM, the Association for Standardization of Automation and Measuring Systems. ASAM is in the process of launching projects to discuss the extension of the OpenDrive format now and are gathering interesting parties for participation. The format allows for extensive modeling of road geometry defined in relation to a reference line and allows for the construction of hierarchical junctions and controllers controlling those junctions. Various methods to represent road curvature are defined, as are coordinate frames from which map objects can be referenced. Maps are stored in a defined XODR XML file format. OpenDrive is part of a family of related projects, namely OpenCRG to define road surface properties and OpenScenario to define be behavior of road users with the simulated environments. Together they form an open powerful way to simulate the behavior of vehicles in traffic environments. For the open source developer, the only drawback is the lack of an open source API to access the map information and perhaps the complexity of the road representations which has so far discouraged implementations of conversions from other map formats. The final map format I will present is LaneLet2. LaneLet2 grew out of a research project which was interested in defining the requirements of HD maps specific to the task of autonomous driving. As the name implies, it builds on a previous project called LaneLets. LaneLet2 comes from the FZI and KT, KTI Research Institutes in Germany and is a HD map format and an associated open software framework. They argue that map usage is tied strongly to the application and thus a well-designed API is needed to deliver the right map information to the right users. A list of the requirements they defined for HD maps from their published paper is given on the right. Links to the source code and the paper are given on the bottom left. Here we will go into a little bit more detail about the format of LaneLet2 HD maps, as it is the format used in the Autoware.Auto project. Here we show the basic data primitives defined by the LaneLet2 format. Points form the lowest most layer, which can be grouped to form line strings. Line strings can be paired to form LaneLets or grouped to form areas. Similar to line strings are polygons, but polygons assume the line string is closed. Lanelets and areas are the only primitives that can have routing connection information. Regulatory elements are another form of primitive, which define traffic regulations, such as traffic light rules, and link to other primitives to which they apply. Digging deep into the underlying format, here we show some of the definitions for the LaneLet2 primitives. The primitives are very simple in definition, but all include an attributes field with which you can attach tags containing key value pairs to the primitives to extend the descriptive power of the format. As such, the authors of LaneLets seek to present a minimalistic representation that can be easily and flexibly extended according to the user requirements. On the right is an example of how LaneLet2 format maps are written to files using the OpenStreetMap XML format. As mentioned before, one of the key benefits of the LaneLet2 format is the provision of an associated software framework. Some of the features of the open source API are geometry-based search functions, such that you can query map primitives with nearest to search or lie within a bounding box, etc. Traffic rules are defined by location and apply according to road user type. Routing graphs can be de defined specific for pedestrians, vehicles or bicycles. As mentioned before, primitives are extensible 
and the API itself has many customizationable points to add new traffic rules, routing costs, etc. On the right is a figure from the Lanelet 2 paper showing how routing graphs are formed differently according to each road, road user. In this case, the difference between a regular car and an emergency vehicle, where emergency vehicles can use slipped lanes and can move between lanes with solid lines. Finally, for the Lanelet 2 format, I wanted to present an example of using the API to do a useful autonomous driving task, such as finding the shortest path. In the code on the right, we first load a Lanelet map and define a set of traffic rules specific to a particular road user in a particular location. Then, op optionally, we can define some routing costs, in this case to penalize lane changing maneuvers, and also add some custom configuration to the routing graph in this case, setting the height of the user to 2 meters. Then we simply create the routing graph using the defined traffic rules with the optional configurations from which we can request the shortest path from one lane let to another. This gives an idea of the power of the API and its ability to perform tasks from a particular perspective depending on the road user. For instance, changing the road user to a bicycle and the country to Japan, the results of the shortest path query might be very different. In summary to this section on HD map industry standards, we have looked at three different map formats, namely NDS, OpenDrive and Lanelet2. From the perspective of open source software development for autonomous driving, an open map format definition and a powerful open software framework are important features for an HD map standard. In similar fashion, the AutoWare Foundation formed a map working group and performed an evaluation on the map formats presented here in order to decide which map format to use for AutoWare.Auto. Lanelet 2 was chosen as a format for physical storage for much the same reasons as discussed here. This slide shows the evaluation criteria and the map format comparison of the working group and a link is included for viewers who want to read more or to join the discussion. The final section for part one of this lecture is HD map creation. HD map creation is specific to each map format and map layer. In practice, open source approaches to autonomous driving tend to focus on two types of maps. One, a geometric map consisting of a dense point cloud. And two, a semantic map defining road, lane, or reference lines or boundaries, etc., in combination with a road lane network con connectivity map. As this lecture series is targeted towards AutoWare users, we will look at 1. Creating a PCD point cloud map, and 2. Creating a lanelet based semantic map. The first step in the creation of PCD point cloud maps is the capture of sensor data from which to generate the dense 3D maps. To do this, typically vehicles mounted with LiDARs, cameras, odometry, GNSS and inertial sensors are driven through the environment to be mapped and the sensor data is recorded to process offline. The captured vehicle can either be part of a dedicated mobile mapping system fleet such as those from ISIN technology pictured at top right, or a fleet of survey cars fitted with sensors such as for Google Maps. Vehicles can also capture data during normal operations such as in deployment as part of a ride sharing fleet as in the case of Lyft or by harvesting data from private vehicles such as with the HEAR self map healing system or mobilize road experience management system. This brings up the question of data management in HD map systems. Data can either be physically stored on the vehicle and transferred after returning to a base location or the data can be transmitted and stored in the cloud while the vehicle is in the field. Now the need for real-time updates and map healing are pushing towards cloud-based data management. This limits the amount of data that can be sent. Thus the above examples work on camera data and the data is typically abstracted before sending. For AutoWare, sensor data can be captured and stored using ROS bags. 
Once sensor data has been captured, in this case LiDAR scan data captured from a vehicle driving through the target environment, we need to process this data to form a consistent 3D point cloud map. The technology to do so is called SLAM, Simultaneous Localization and Mapping, so called because the task is to simultaneously recover both the vehicle pose as it moves through the environment, the localization part, and the structure of the environment through which we are moving, the mapping part. SLAM is, SLAM is an extensive research field in its own right, and it is not within the scope of this lecture to explain it. Briefly, the SLAM process tracks the local position of the vehicle by matching sensor data in sequential frames. Assuming the environment is static, we can recover the eagle motion. Such LiDAR scan matching can be achieved by the NDT algorithm, which was presented in the localization lecture in this series. Sensor data can then be accumulated over a series of frames to give the map of a traveled path. This path estimation is subject to drift and accumulation of small errors as shown in the middle figure on the right. As we move through the environment, we check for loops in the traveled path, areas where we have been before, by matching the current sensor data to the existing map. If we detect a loop closure, we need to correct the error in its estimated position by optimizing the previously estimated vehicle path to minimize that error. Loop closing is illustrated in the bottom right of this figure. The video shows the NDT-based LiDAR SLAM from waterware.ai. The vehicle moves through the environment, accumulating more map data as it forms a consistent, dense point cloud map. Further information on SLAM can be found in the links presented at the bottom, including a link to the ongoing implementation of LiDAR-based SLAM in autoware.auto. Creating semantic HD maps automatically is a much harder problem. For small proof-of-concept autonomous driving demonstrations, it may still be easier to construct such maps manually using tools such as JOSM. To do so, the point cloud map or a satellite image is typically loaded into a viewer and the mouse is used to select and draw geometric primitives such as points, line strings and polygons guided by the underlying visualization. Semantic labels, attribute tags and connecting relations can then be manually entered by dialog boxes or pop-down menus. A free application to do this map creation for Langlet 2 maps is JOSM, the Java OpenStreetMap Editor. An example of manually building such a map from a satellite image is shown on the right. Another Langlet 2 map creation tool is the Vector Map Builder from Tier 4, which I will introduce in the next slide. Finally, automatic generation of HD maps is a hot topic, and all of the commercial HD map providers mentioned in this presentation have proprietary solutions. To give just a taste, NVIDIA propose an end-to-end -end HD mapping system in their drive ma mapping product, which converts sensor data directly to HD maps. TRI AD, in collaboration with Maxa and NTT Data, have demonstrated automatic extraction of lane data from satellite images, and TRI AD and HERE have demonstrated accurately placing camera traffic signs or signals detected by onboard sensor data in HD maps. To end this section of map creation, I would like to introduce Vector Map Builder, a tool created by Tier 4 to construct Langlet 2 maps. First, a point cloud map is loaded into the viewer to guide the creation of the Langlet 2 map. Through a simple point and click interface, Langlets and other primitives can be defined. It is manual, but the system assists in creation of common primitives such as lanelets, so map prototypes can be rapidly produced. This tool is web-based and requires a Tier 4 account, but registration is free. It also produces a lanelet 2 map with some extensions specific to autoware.ai, so care should be taken in treating it as a regular lanelet 2 map. So, in summary, in the first part of this lecture, I have introduced what HD maps are and what information they contain. I have introduced three industry standard map formats, NDS, OpenDrive, and Langlet 2, that are relevant for open source autonomous driving development. 
And finally, I have briefly described how to create HD maps with a focus on HD map formats discussed above. HD maps is a very broad topic and it is, is impossible to go into depth in all areas, but I hope this lecture has given you some insight into the purpose and use of HD maps for autonomous driving. The second part of this lecture focuses on the use of HD maps in the AutoWare software stack. Thank you for your attention. I hope to see you in the next part of this lecture. Hello, my name is Simon Thompson. I am Director of Research at Tier 4. Following on from the first part of this lecture on HD maps for autonomous driving, I am going to talk now about HD map usage in autoware.auto. The previous lecture introduced the concepts behind HD maps and their use for autonomous driving technology, how to build HD maps and some of the common more open HD map formats that are available to the open source software community. In this half of the lecture, I will go on to detail how these concepts are implemented in autoware.auto, what HD map formats are used and give some examples of their use to give you an understanding of the practical aspects of using HD maps for autonomous driving. A small caveat for this lecture. As HD mapping functionality in autoware.auto is still under design, some examples will be taken from autoware.ai, the predecessor to autoware.auto, and the opportunity to work through examples in the autoware.auto development environment will be limited. As a benefit though, being in the design phase, if you are interested in HD maps and autonomous driving open source software platforms, there is a great opportunity to contribute to the design and implementation of HD maps in the next generation AutoWare software stack. So thank you for your interest in AutoWare and HD maps. I hope you enjoy the rest of the lecture. So now I'd like to give an outline of the contents of this lecture. First, I will describe the types of HD maps used in autoware.auto, namely the point cloud map and the semantic map, and detail the particular map formats used for each map type and give a little bit of context as to why these types and formats were chosen. Second, I will briefly introduce the use cases for HD maps for autoware.auto. This gives an insight into what sort of information autoware needs from HD maps and why it needs the information. Then, for each of the map types used in autoware.auto, I will detail the HD map architecture and show how the map information is provided to the other elements of the autonomous driving software stack. Next, I will give brief examples of HD map usage in autoware in the areas of simulation, localization, perception, planning, and prediction. This is just to give concrete examples of how the information is used and is not meant to give an in-depth details of the implementation. Those sort of details will be left to the relevant lectures in these series. Note that all the examples here are taken from autoware.ai. Finally, to wrap the lecture up, I will show a demonstration video of autoware in operation using all of the HD map information described above to achieve autonomous driving. The first topic in today's lecture is HD map formats in autoware.auto. Here I will describe the types of HD maps used in autoware and also the particular map formats each map type uses. Unfortunately, autoware.auto HD map functionality is still very much in the design and implementation stage. As such, there is not much I can present on actual implementation details from autoware.auto, and most information presented here will reflect the current perspective on the use of HD maps from the Autoware Foundation's Autonomous Software Working Group and the use of HD maps in autoware.ai. Similarly, the current ODD of Autonomous Valley Parking is limited in its use of HD maps, so additional use cases are presented from autoware.ai, such as the general traffic situations you find on public roads. The two types of HD maps used in autoware and the particular formats that are used to represent them are one, a point cloud map in PCD format, and two, a semantic map in Lanelet 2 format. The choice of HD maps types and formats in autoware.auto is somewhat dependent on autoware's development history, and I will present a short history of HD map use to give some context for the current formats. 
So as I mentioned, the two types of HD maps used in AutoWear are point cloud maps and semantic maps. Point cloud maps are dense 3D point clouds representing the physical structure of the real world environment. They are used in AutoWear exclusively for localization, specifically the matching of current LiDAR data to the dense 3D representation of the environment. This data is stored in PCD or point cloud data files, a format introduced by the open source software project PCL or point cloud library. In contrast, the semantic map contains sparse geometric primitives and their associated semantic meaning relative to the autonomous driving task. This, info this includes such information as the road and lane networks, traffic signals, road, sign, road side signage, and road markings such as stop lines and pedestrian crossings. This information is used for such things as traffic light detection, object predi prediction, decision making, and motion planning. Orig AutoWare originally used a proprietary map format from ISIN technology, but have now moved to the open source format detailed by the Lane 2 project. For some context on the choice of map, map formats, and in particular the use of two separate map formats, I wanted to present a short history of HD map usage in AutoWare. When AutoWare was still a research project at Nagoya University, two key technologies enabled its initial success at achieving autonomous driving. One, a robust implementation of 3D NDT map-based localization, and two, through its collaboration with the MMS mapping company Ison Technology, they had access to a semantic map format that could be constructed along with the dense 3D point cloud maps Ison's MMS systems could produce. As AutoWare developed, the availability of NDT algorithms, point cloud registration template classes, and ROS packages in the open source PCL led to the adoption of the PCD format. Both these formats remained in use until AutoWare.ai version 1.13, when community pressure led to a move away from the proprietary semantic map format to Lanelet 2, an open source alternative. This move allowed for easy community development of HD map dependent components and also enabled users to build their own semantic maps according to an open format. AutoWare.ai version 1.13 also contained some extensions to the Lanelet 2 format specific to AutoWare. AutoWare.auto in design for the AVP demonstration has retained the use of Lanelet 2 maps but have a, has a preference to keep to the original Lanelet 2 de definition and if possible to leave internode interfaces format independent. AutoWare.auto would also like to minimize the dependence of the software stack on PCL libraries and is moving away from their use particularly in the new implementation of the NDT localization algorithm. The PCD format comes from the PCL open source project for large scale point cloud processing. Very briefly, the format's advantages, as described on the project's homepage, are the ability to store and process organized point clouds, the ability to use different ty data types, and the ability to use n dimensional histograms to represent feature descriptions. AutoWare does not really take advantage of these points, but it is a nice, well known format, format and comes with a nice API for file I.O. and manipulation of point clouds. At the bottom of the slide, an example of a point cloud from MAP4, a subsidiary of Tier 4, shows the rich environmental structure that can be represented using such maps. Langlet 2, the semantic map format, has already been described by Brian in the first half of this lecture. Briefly, it consists of multiple layers of map primitives, such as points, line strings, polygons, areas, lanelets, and regulatory elements. Each primitive type is easily extensible through attribute tags, allowing for a minimalist but flexible representation of the traffic scene. There are many benefits of the lanelet 2 format, such as a nice conceptual approach behind it, the use of road boundary information in the lanelet definition. However, the main advantage of Lanelet 2 is the comprehensive AI around which it was defined. The C++ API supports 2D and 3D types, is const 
typed to avoid inadvertent modification of the underlying data and offers routines for routing, graph creation and search, pro projection of map data into local coordinates, geometric operations on map pr primitives, and an OSM XML format for input and output. So those are the two types of HD maps used in AutoWare. I will now show a short video of an example of the two types of maps being used in conjunction to represent an environment within which autonomous driving can be performed. This is an older video with point cloud maps and the older ice and technology format semantic maps. But I think it clearly shows how both maps can be used in conjunction to give a very detailed representation of the world. Here the structure of the environment can clearly be seen from the white point cloud data and the traffic network lanes, stop lines and pedestrian crossing can clearly be seen from the colored primitives contained within the semantic map. The next section is use cases for HD maps in autoware.auto. By looking at use cases, we can discover what information is required from HD maps to perform the necessary functions. By now in this lecture series, you would have heard about the initial target operational design domain for autoware.auto, the autonomous valet parking use case. In this use case, the autonomous vehicle must navigate between set pickup drop off locations and parking spots within a parking lot. With respect to HD map information, this requires the following functionality. Localization. The system must accurately localize itself relative to a map of the environment. An HD map in this case needs to represent detailed geometric structure in the environment against which to localize. Route planning. The system needs to be able to plan a global route from the current vehicle location to a goal location. In this case, the HD map needs to contain information such as connected road lane network structure, designated parking spots or pickup drop-off points and other drivable regions in the environment. Local planning. The system must be able to plan a local trajectory to navigate the global route and execute a parking maneuver, given the current vehicle state, the local lane and the parking spot boundaries. The HD map must therefore contain the geometric boundaries of drivable areas such as roads, lanes, parking spots and roadside areas. From these use cases, two key considerations can be observed. One, the vehicle position relative to the map coordinate frame is very important to either project information into the local frame or to situa situate local tasks such as sensing and motion planning in the map frame. Two, we must consider the scope of information used for each use case, the geometric extent of the map appropriate for a given task, the type of semantic information required, and how long is this information relevant for. In addition to the AVP target use cases, there are many other use cases needed to achieve general autonomous driving on public roads. Although outside of the scope of autoware.auto at this stage, it is useful to consider to somewhat future-proof the HD map architectural design. Public road use cases include such things as guiding or extending the perception of the autonomous system by using map information to focus perception in areas such as pedestrian crossings or to aid in traffic light detection and recognition or even to act as a virtual sensor for road markings such as stop lines, removing the need to sense them from on onboard sensors entirely. Other public road use cases are lane maneuver planning, to change lanes, overtake other road users, etc., or velocity planning, adjusting the vehicle's velocity profile based on map information such as speed limits, stop lines, and pedestrian crossings. Another very important use case for public roads is in the prediction of other road users' motion. Map information such as lanes and pedestrian crossings, footpaths and traffic regulations, etc. can help to predict the future motion of other traffic participants, such as assuming a car will continue to stay within its lane and will obey local traffic rules. 
With the use cases defined, I will now go ahead and present the proposed HD map architecture for AutoWare.Auto. In this section, I will first summarize the functionality required and the assumptions that apply to the AutoWare.Auto implementation. Then I will detail the AutoWare.Auto transform tree, including the map coordinate frames, detailing how map information fits within the representational world of AutoWare.Auto. Then I will present the proposed architectures for both the point cloud and the semantic maps. From the presented use cases and in preparation to designing an HD map architecture, we can build an overview of the HD map functionality required by AutoWare.Auto. Broadly, HD maps provide a priori information about the environment structure and its semantic meaning in relation to the autonomous driving task. In particular, the HD map implementation in AutoWare should load the map data, store the data in the system while it's in operation, and provide relevant, geometrically, semantically, and temporally relevant information to the right nodes in a timely fashion. We can identify three key considerations regarding map data. One, where is the origin of the map? We must define a map coordinate system and transforms to and from the local coordinate frame, which are consistent and appropriate for each task. Two, when should the data be distributed? At initialization, as needed throughout operation? And three, what extent of the map data should be distributed, whether it be geometric bounds of map data or different aspects of semantic content? In implementing this functionality, AutoWare.Auto makes some assumptions, namely that the map physical storage is local. There is no cloud network-based distribution at the moment. Map is, the map is to be loaded by one ROS2 node and passed on to other nodes using ROS communication protocols. Whereas AutoWare.AI simply passes all in map information to all nodes that require map information at node startup, AutoWare.Auto will pass relevant information in a timely manner appropriate to the task to be performed by the requesting node. In ROS, the transform tree defines how the various coordinate frames in the robotic systems are related, such as the transforms between the Earth and map coordinate frames, between the map and the vehicle base link frames, and the vehicle base link and sensor device frames. By maintaining such a tree, it is easy to convert data from one frame into the coordinates of another frame. For autonomous driving, we specifically need to convert between map frames and vehicle local frames such as base link or sensor frames. In the diagram on the right, you can see the relevant frames such as Earth, Map, Odom, Baselink and various sensor frames. This document is taken from the AutoWare.Auto localization design document. For HD maps, this allows us to use map information from various map sources in a common and consistent coordinate frame by either converting all data to a common frame upon loading from file or at loading, define an appropriate transform to convert data into a common frame as needed, or using a particular map origin as the common frame, i.e. the PCD map frame as, as the common frame, because localization is the most time sensitive use of HD maps, and we can avoid excessive conversion between coordinate frames. In the blue circle in the diagram, you can see the proposed transform structure relevant to HD map usage in AutoWare.Auto. In the map server node, we load the PCD map and publish an earth to map transform. In the semantic map map server node, we publish a map to semantic map transform. This allows semantic map data to be transformed into the PCD map coordinate frame as required. AutoWare.AI ignored this problem by assuming PCD maps and semantic maps share a consistent coordinate frame. In larger scale systems, or when performing map updates, this assumption might not hold, and the ability to convert into a common reference frame at runtime is desirable. Now I will introduce the proposed point cloud map architecture for AutoWare.Auto. 
As described earlier, point cloud maps are dense 3D point clouds stored in PCD files and are used in autoware.auto to perform localization, specifically the NDT-based localization. Here we can see the proposed architecture of the point cloud map provider node and its usages. The map provider node, named NDT map provider node in this image, receives input from a YMAL node parameter file a PCD map file and a YAML map file containing map metadata such as the origin of the map. The map provider node uses these input files to load a PCD map and construct a, an NDT voxel map appropriate for use in NDT localization. Other output from this node is the earth to map transform and also a copy of the point cloud data suitable for visualization, which can then be subsampled as necessary and visualized by RVIS2. In answer to the three concerns for HD maps, this node defines the Earth to map transform, map data is published once on startup, and the entire map is published. For larger scale maps, this approach might need to be modified, but 3D point cloud data is relatively dense and continuously publishing subsets of map data for localization could result in a degradation of communications. Looking closer at the input interface to the NDT map provider node, we can see the PC PCD file where the point point cloud data is stored is in the standard PCD format. The YML map file contains the origin of the map in geographic coordinates. It can also contain details about the map version and format if required. The node parameter files contains information about the map files used, the configuration of the NDT voxel map, and whether the map data is going to be visualized or not. In this slide, we look a bit deeper at what is happening within the NDT map provider node. First, the node uses the YM, YAML C++ lib to load the map metadata YAML file and then uses PCL library IO classes to load the point cloud data. Then the geographic lib package is used to generate an ECEF or Earth-centric Earth fixed transform for defining to for defining the Earth to map transform of the transform tree. From the raw point cloud data, an NDT voxel grid map is generated. This is basically subsampling the point cloud map into voxels while maintaining a normal distribution representation of the original point cloud data within each voxel. The map is published on the topic NDT map. Finally, if the point cloud is to be visualized, a standard ROS point cloud 2 representation of the data is formed and published on the topic Viz NDT map. So that is the architecture of the point cloud map as implemented in autoware.auto. This functionality is already included in the open repository and you can go ahead and try to launch the NDT map provider node and lo load and visualize the point cloud map. To do so, the following files are necessary. A point cloud map in PCD format, a map meta information file in YAML format, and a node parameter file in YAML format. Inside the autoware.auto ADE environment, example files of each sort can be found at the locations given within this slide. Once you have confirmed you have the relevant files and have configured the settings in the node parameter files appropriate for the map files you are using, you can go ahead and launch the node. After building the autoware.auto repository, please see lecture one in this series for details, and making sure you source the ROS setup file relevant for autoware.auto, you can go ahead and launch the node in either of two ways, either by directly running the NDT map publisher exe executable file and passing it to the node and passing it the node parameter file, or by using the example map provider launch file. The launch files also have commands to launch a voxel grid node to subsample the point cloud for visualization. Alternatively, the NDT map provider node can be launched as part of the complete AVP demo launch file available in the autoware.auto repository. 
Please try it out when you have time. Now I will introduce the proposed semantic map architecture for autoware.auto. Here is an initial design document for semantic map usage in autoware.auto, specifically for the AVP demo. Nodes which use semantic map information are shown in green. You can see they all relate to motion planning tasks at the global, behavior, and local maneuver levels. While still under design, basically the semantic map provider node should load the map from a file and provide relevant map information to each of the planning processes as appropriate. So here is an initial semantic map architecture to achieve that purpose. The lanelet2 map provider node in the center of the diagram takes a node parameter file, a lanelet2 OSM map file, and a YAML metamap information file as input, and then provides subsets of that data to consumer nodes as required. In this architecture, we use the ROS2 service method of request and response data communication. The three HD map considerations are answered as follows, where the provider node defines the broadcasts defines and broadcasts the transform map to semantic map to convert between the semantic map frame and the point cloud map frame. The map data is supplied only on requests from consumer nodes and only the requested subset of the map data is provided as appropriate for the needs of the consumer nodes. Here we look a little closer at the details of the input interface to the lanelet 2 map provider node. The YAML node parameter file is yet to be defined, but will probably contain the lanelet 2 file and YAML metamap information file paths. The lanelet 2 map is defined using the OSM XML file as shown, and the YAML map meta information file will contain the origin of the coordinate system. The OSM defined geocentric coordinates will be projected into. Next, I will present some of the details of the function of the lanelet2 map provider node. First, it loads the OSM file using the lanelet2 API and the XML meta file using the XML C++ lib. Using the origin from the meta file, we can project the OSM geocentric coordinates into an east-north-up local semantic map coordinate frame. By subscribing to the earth-to-map transform, the node then can construct a map to semantic map transform and broadcast that to the system. Next, the node initiates a ROS2 service interface using a predefined service request and response message structure. Then the node waits to receive service requests. Service requests contain information about the geometric bounds and the semantic data types requested by the consumer node. The provider node then extracts relevant data from map and builds a subset of the map and sends that subset as a response to the service request. In this slide, we take a look at the proposed message formats used in the map request and response service. The messages are defined in the interface definition language that is replacing the older ROS.SRV and .msg definition files. Here at the blue highlighted regions, we can see the definition of the HAD map request and HAD map response messages. The request has a definition for semantic primitives, basically a variable sized array listing all the semantic information types requested by the consumer node. These primitive types are defined as an enumerated type and will refer to such information as lane information, traffic lights, etc. Furthermore, the request message defines geometric upper and lower bounds of map information as requested by the consumer node. The HAD map response definition is simply an HAD map binary message containing the requested map information as defined on the right hand side of the slide. In the highlighted region, you can see that the map data is represented by just an array of binary data. 
This and the enumerated semantic primitive types are designed to be independent of the semantic map format and should not contain anything specific to the lanelet to map definition. This is to ensure that in the event of a change in map format, that the interface and map architecture can still be used. Finally in this section, here is an example of the semantic map provider node being used by a node doing global planning. The global planner on init needs to use semantic map information. It builds an HAD map request message detailing which semantic primitive it needs. In this case, the primitives lanes, parking, driving, drivable regions, regulations, and traffic rules, and sets some upper and lower geometric bounds of required map information. These bounds should recover the entire region of the map the global planner will operate within. It then sends a request using the ROS service request mechanism and waits for the reply. On the map provider side, on init, the node loads and projects the map into the semantic map frame and waits for service requests. Upon receiving a service request, the node extracts the relevant subset of the semantic map, de depending on which primitives were requested and whether the primitives lie within the requested geometric bounds. Then the map provider node builds a binary map message from the extracted submap and sends the response back to the consumer node. In this case, it is the global planner who, on receiving the response, converts the map data in the message into a usable lanelet2 map and then can proceed to do global planning on that map data. So that is the proposed HD map architectures for point cloud and semantic maps. As you can see, the system is still heavily under development and people interested in contributing to the project at this stage are very welcome to get on board, either to suggest improvements to the architecture or to help in the implementation. Now, to demonstrate how map data is used within AutoWare, I would like to give some examples of various system components using the HD map information. These examples are taken from autoware.ai and show examples of HD map use in cases such as simulation, localization, perception, planning, and prediction. Due to time constraints, I will not go into depth into the implementation of any of these examples and will leave that to the relevant lectures in this series or to the autoware.ai documentation. In the LG SVL map simulator, the LaneNet2 semantic map can be loaded directly into the simulator asset bundle to define the road network in the simulation world. The simulator can then use the road network to generate behavior for MPC agents performing navigation tasks within the simulator. Using that network, the simulator generates MPC agents which follow the road network as shown in the simulated world and by the light green boxes on the map visualization. The MPC agents follow along the road network structure and navigate in an easily understandable manner. Localization as described earlier, the point cloud map is used to perform localization by generating an NDT voxel map and matching the current laser sensor data against the NDT voxel map to estimate the position and orientation of the autonomous vehicle. In this video, we can see the autonomous vehicle's simulated laser data as the red point cloud moving in the middle of the map visualization. Here, AutoWare is matching the red light LiDAR data against the NDT map constructed from the white point cloud. Here is a simple example of using the HD map information to aid perception. In the example, the car is approaching an intersection which is in controlled by traffic lights. Using the localization estimate, the system knows the relative position between the vehicle's camera frame and the position of the traffic lights in the semantic map. 
Furthermore, from the estimated position, the system can recover which lane the vehicle is currently in and which instance of the traffic light is relevant to control the traffic in its lane. The position of the relevant traffic light can then be projected into the camera view plane and a region of interest defined to help the detection and recognition of the traffic signal. On the right, the projected position of each traffic light has been overlain on the image. Planning is an obvious example of how HD maps can help autonomous driving systems to plan a path to follow. Autoware first defines a start and goal post, such as by clicking on Arvis to set the current and goal locations. From these locations, it extracts the current, the closest drivable primitives in the lanelet map and plans a route from start to goal primitives using the connectivity and traffic rule information in the semantic map. The LaneNet 2 API implements this function nicely and the system can construct routing graphs for the entire map and then search for shortest path between any two map elements. If needed, the center line of the resulting route can be extracted as a path to follow or local path planners can generate more feasible paths. Special maneuver planners such as the parking planner can be evoked as needed. In this example, simple planning from the current location to a parking spot is demonstrated. The user clicks on a parking space and a parking maneuver to park the vehicle is planned. The simulation then follows the found path. Unfortunately, at this time of the demonstration, there was no controller available to execute the parking maneuver in the simulated environment. So, the parking spot is just replanned, uh, reselected, and another plan is generated. Apologies for the graphics in the simulated view, as my graphics card was struggling that day. And finally, here is an example of using the HD map for prediction of other vehicles. Using the road structure, models of the behavior of other vehicles can be made which assume that road users will keep to their lanes and to follow general traffic rules and regulations. For instance, given the location of a perceived vehicle in the map, the map's routing graph can be explored to generate possible future routes that the car might take, such as keeping to a lane, turning at an intersection, or changing lanes. In the video, we can see that for each detected vehicle, shown by green bounding boxes, the predicted path can be generated by following lane information, shown by the lines punctuated by circles extending in the front of the moving vehicles. Finally, to wrap this lecture up, I would like to show a final video of AutoWare in operation on a real-world vehicle. This is actually the same video, Dijan, showed in lecture one of this series and in viewing it again after this lecture on HD maps I would like to hope you can see the video from a new perspective and have an insight as to how HD map information is being used and how important the use of HD maps is in, in, in achieving autonomous driving. So here we can see the, the goal position being set in the semantic map and the AutoWare plans a nice path along the semantic map to reach the goal position. And here the, the map information is being projected into the live camera view and you can see how it is aligned nicely with the real world through the use of the localization.
and now the car controller is engaged and it starts moving off and immediately you can see that the the system is aware there's an intersection here and it knows it has to stop at that location a car passes and it's doing a prediction of that car using the hd map and the lane information again the car turns and knows there's a crosswalk there so adjusts the velocity accordingly and you can see the information regarding the traffic lights in the in the hd map there and here you can see the car planning ahead around the curve following the lane information and again we know there's a stop sign and an intersection at this location so most of the decision making in this video is being done directly from the hd map and only the live perception of obstacles in that case and the live detection of of traffic and other vehicles in the scene is done uh, using the sensor data If we skip ahead here to see when a parking maneuver is being executed. We can see that the parking lot is defined in the HD map. Um, the car approaches the, approaches the parking spot and then it must make a free space planning maneuver to discover how to park in the parking lot. And to do this, it uses the information of the lane information, not only its current lane, but the uh, oncoming coming traffic lane and also drivable regions that might connect the lane to the parking spot, but not directly be part of either of them. So there's a small region between the lane and the parking spot and the HD map knows that it's okay to drive on that that part of the road surface. So in summary, in this lecture I have introduced the HD map types and formats in the AutoWare Open Source Autonomous Driving Project. I have detailed the HD map use cases for AutoWare.Auto and the Autonomous Valley Parking Operational Design Domain. Proposed architectures for the provision of both point cloud and semantic HD map information within the Autom AutoWare system were presented. I showed examples of HD map usage for various autonomous driving components such as simulation, localization, planning, perception, and prediction. With a final example of AutoWare in operation on a real vehicle, underlying the extent to which HD map information is beneficial to achieving autonomous driving in the real world. So, thank you very much for your attention. I hope everyone could find something of interest in this lecture. If you are interested in joining the AutoWare community, or if you specifically want to contribute to the development of HD maps in an open source project, you are very welcome to get in touch through the links shown on the screen. Thank you once more.